Set the temperature in the kitchen to 19 degrees. Nice. Hello, I'm Carl from Team Burgundy and welcome to our channel. This time we're looking at the Starling Home Hub, which is advertised as a simple and user-friendly way to bring your Nest products into Apple's world of HomeKit and Siri. And today I'll be giving you our honest review after about two months worth of use. As usual here, we'll be looking at what you get in a box, and we'll take you through the physical installation, set up from a software point of view, and we'll finish up with some demonstrations of the integrations and our final thoughts. Now we have always liked the idea of a smart home where it made sense, and I've been slowly adding devices over time since moving into our home about three years ago. The challenge has always been getting the best solution for each job and getting everything to work together in what is a very fragmented market. We've always liked the look and feel of the Nest products, so we're quite heavily invested in those now, and for better or worse, we live in Apple's walled garden, so everything needs to work and play nicely together. I had initially hoped that Nest would bring native integration with Apple, but when it was purchased by Google, that hope seemed even less likely. Now if, like us, you've got some Nest products, then you know you can of course use the Nest app for iOS, and for the most part it does a great job. But for someone like me who's a bit of a perfectionist, it's always kind of bugged me that I can't control the majority of our home from the home app. And that's where this little box of tricks from Starling comes in. Let's have a look at what you get. Starling are based in America but do offer worldwide shipping. This video is not sponsored and we waited about a week for delivery to the UK. The hub itself is very compact, measures about 5cm square and is about 3cm tall. The unit has a network port on one side, a micro SD card and power port on the other, and a QR code on the bottom. You get a quick start guide with the URL that you will need during setup later. A short USB A to micro USB cable used to power the unit. A US power adapter which I won't be using, instead I'll be using an Apple power adapter that I had left over from an old iPhone. And lastly a 1 meter network cable. The packaging itself is very simple, but it does the job well enough. As far as physical installation goes, it's really all refreshingly simple. You only need to connect one end of your network cable to the port on the hub, and the other end into a spare port on your router. Next, simply connect the power cable, and if everything does what it should, you should see activity lights on the network port, and then you can move on to the setup. The Starling website promises setup takes less than five minutes. From my experience, the setup wasn't very painful, but did take a little longer than that to iron out a couple of kinks. You will need the URL provided in the quick start guide, as mentioned earlier. And initially, I attempted to run through the process on my iPhone, but was quickly given a web page saying that the setup could not complete and I had to use a browser on my computer instead. Now, I'm not sure what the problem was, but happily the iMac didn't have the same trouble, but as you can see, you do need to install the Chrome plugin. With that taken care of, all that's really involved is logging in and authorising your Google or Nest account to talk to the Starling Hub. We migrated over to a Google account from Nest about six months ago, so I had no issues here. A couple of minutes later, the account had authenticated and was showing that the pairing was complete. Now we will switch over to the iPhone in a second to complete the home side of things, but once everything is done, from the Starling web interface, you can see an overview of what devices you have control over, their status, as well as some basic functions like a factory reset and some diagnostics tools. Jumping over to the iPhone then, from here we need to go into the Home app and then add the hub as a new device. Once you scan the QR code, you will be notified that the device is not certified by Apple. We already knew that, so we're all gonna continue. Now I've decided to leave as much of this process unedited as possible so you can see exactly how simple it is, but you may want to skip through to the demonstrations once you get the idea. You are able to change the name of the hub to something a little more friendly and then each device will appear one by one. We have two cameras, two smoke detectors and a thermostat. Each device will have a different number of sensors that needs to be allowed and added to the correct room. For example, a smoke detector has sensors for smoke and carbon monoxide. 
Now the Nest app merges these all into one device, but the styling works by presenting each one independently. This doesn't cause a problem as it actually gives you more flexibility when you're creating automations. Just take your time to make sure you enable each sensor as you're prompted and then add it to the correct room within your home setup. And so far I haven't needed to do anything else from the styling room interface. It seems a really stable platform and maintains itself quite nicely, as I've noticed it's updated itself with new firmwares a couple of times since it's been installed. I did have one small issue with the two cameras after the initial run through as both were showing me an error of no response. But this was easily fixed by force closing the home app and then logging back into the styling web interface using the browser on the computer. This kicked everything into life and has been working great ever since. Now from iOS you pretty much have full control over all your device's sensors. There are a lot of different rooms set up and you can see in the kitchen for example where we have the thermostat it gives you easy access to change the temperature. Now I actually find this slightly quicker to refresh than the Nest app which is excellent. The thermostat also allows you to set up home and away settings, just like the native Nest app, so you don't need to warm an empty house and don't lose any functionality there either. The Nest Smart Protect smoke detectors show up like this and give you push notifications if something were to happen. One of the things we can do now which I really like is being able to see your home devices and get notifications on Apple TV. You can quickly swipe through all your cameras and you can go full screen. As you can see there is a very small delay in the camera updating at first and you know when that's finished when the feed changes to the orange live indicator at the bottom. This feed is not yet live and now it is. Not bad at all really. You can fire automations that you have set up from the home app in tvOS or you can use your voice and Siri. Doorbell presses produce a picture-in-picture -picture notification on the tvOS with no delay which is an absolutely fantastic feature. And it's a similar story on your watch. I'm still using a Series 3 Apple Watch, so it's not the fastest anymore. It does take a few moments to update the camera streams, but once they're on, you can check them out. Use the two-way audio on the Nest cameras to talk to people that you can see, and get notifications for things like doorbell presses and motion alerts. These notifications aren't quite as rich as the Nest notifications, so you won't get things like package detection alerts at the moment. And another thing to bear in mind is that you can't look back through historical events from the Home app. You'll still need to use the Nest app for those depending on your level of Nest Wear subscription. Please do let us know in the comments if you have any questions or would like to see a follow-up video in more detail showing any specific demonstrations. Final thoughts then. Yeah, I really think this is a fantastic purchase and has easily exceeded all my expectations. If you have the same mix of Apple and Nest products as we do, then it's an absolute no-brainer for the money. Build quality is excellent, setup and installation could not be easier, and it really allows us to get the most out of the investment in our other smart devices. We hope you like this video. Please do like and subscribe if you did, as we're still growing and it helps a lot. And don't forget to check out our other videos. I'm Carl from Team Burgundy, and we'll see you next time.